first, let's start off with some music. just so great I'm gonna have to start it from the beginning a little bit before we really just get into exactly what we want to accomplish tonight which is to speak about the three powers of praise something 
song that I often enjoy when I just want to get into his praise when we're thinking about just breaking cycles cycles is just through our constant praise I know it's difficult to often just go through praise why because so many bad things have continually happened to us where we're constantly praying we're constantly meditating on his word we're constantly fasting and it seems like we keep going to the same exact position as we were before sometimes we just need to do things in order to break those cycles and despite what we're going through just consistently praise so I'm going to go through today just three, let's see here, three powers of praise that I was just thinking about and researching about uh, this week. And I'm just going to get down deep into it. Um, the first point to consider, again, the three powers of praise. The first point to consider is that praise makes the enemy flee. The first point is praise makes the enemy flee. Why is this important? Because if he flees, then hopefully we can take all these this type of negative energy from around us and continually focus on what we're supposed to focus on. So you can think about just friends who are constantly doubting you or other individuals who are doubting you either on the job or at church or even within your home, your own family structure. And think about just taking away that negative impact that they have and just focusing on you. What would ultimately happen? Hopefully, positive energy would begin to build up and you could be better than what you were before. So when we start talking about praise, what is praise ultimately going to do? Push away the enemy, right? So our positive energy is going to push away all the negative energy from around us. So constant praise is going to allow us to have even a more of a fervent nature to serving God and loving him and showing adoration to him and pushing the enemy away because the enemy essentially doesn't want to see that the enemy wants no part of that at that point the enemy knows just really how powerful you are so the first point of emphasis on my three powers of praise is praise makes the enemy flee it pushes back the darkness that surrounds the blocks the hissing lies over us we're going to look at 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 22. Again, 2 Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 22. And it reads, as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. So the power of praise in this instance of the enemy fleeing, is in two chronicles the the author is indicating that because they sang and praised at that time the lord sent ambushes against the men who were attempting to destroy them right so that's how great that the lord is and we're going to see in other verses here as well that the lord is so powerful anybody who's trying to dethrone the positive energy that you have or the positiveness that you're trying to exude in the atmosphere the Lord can defeat them, no matter who they are. And this type of praise, there's so many different types of praise, and I can go into an exegesis just about the seven, the main seven types of praise that there is when we talk about the scriptures, the, the scriptures in the Greek and Hebrew scripture, that 
this type of praise that I'm referring to, I'm sure we've all heard of Barak. Not, I'm, I'm not talking about our president. I'm talking about the act of kneeling. So in this case, it was almost like an act of kneeling, the type of praise that these individuals were exuding when they were singing and praising God. So Barak is translated as to kneel or bow as an act of adoration. So Barak, B-A-R-A-K, just like our former president, uh, to kneel or bow as an act of adoration. We can see in Psalm chapter chapter 95, verse 6, and continually it implies a continual consciousness, like uh, an acknowledgement of God. It shows an attitude of expectancy, and that's the that's the main ingredient of praise too. Is that when you're praising God and you're when you're telling Him exactly what your needs are, that you you're expected that He is going to meet those needs. It may not be in your time frame, but you have a certain level of expectancy that He's going to do exactly what you believe Him to do. And when you're praising the type of Barak praise that we're referring to, it's in a worshipful mode. It's expecting to receive, as I indicated before, but it's not in a begging attitude. You're not begging, right? You're just exclaiming to God exactly what your desires are. And hopefully you're exclaiming those desires as a way where you're saying, Lord, if you do this, I know I can be even more fervent in your word in doing X, Y, and Z, right? So it's kind of like um, when I was, uh, any type of test that I used to take, and I feel like it's a difficult exam. And... Of course, I'm not perfect, and of course, I make mistakes, and I'm just praying to God, Lord, please bless me while I'm taking this exam, because I'm not taking this exam because I want to. I'm not attaining this degree because I want to. I'm doing it because of your will. So please, um, I'm asking you in total praise that you allow me, and I'm expecting you to help me pass this exam to the best of my ability, whether that be a C, whether that be a B, just ultimately just help me pass this course so I can move on to greater lengths and measures to doing your will, right? So uh, again, the Barak that I'm talking about, the praise that I'm talking about, um, it's a salute, it's thanks, it's often translated as blessed or bless. And we can see that in several types of verses here in Judges chapter five, verse two. Judges chapter five, verse two, that's one of the places where the uh, places where uh, the act of kneeling is resonating as Barak. Judges chapter 5, verse 2, Psalm chapter 16, verse 7. Again, Psalm chapter 16, verse 7. Psalm chapter 34, verse 1. Psalm chapter 63, verse 4. Psalm chapter 66, verse 8. Psalm chapter uh, 100, verse 4. So I can go on and on just, just about the, the type of... Um, praise that is happening when we're kneeling okay again song and praise so the number two point that i'll make us realize okay well actually before we get to that i'm going to give you a specific um dem illustration demonstration of the type of the type of praise that i'm referring to with barack and one one chronicles chapter 29 verses 10 through 20 okay 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verses 10 through 20. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read like a little snippet of uh, several portions of it. It says, David blessed. And again, I said bless or bless can also mean the type of uh, praise that we're referring to, which is Barak. David blessed the Lord before all of the assembly, right? So David knelt down. David was showing an act of adoration in front of the whole assembly, right? And ended his prayer by saying, now bless, okay? He's saying to do the same thing that he just did. Now bless the Lord your God. So all the assembly blessed, or we can say Barak, right? In that case, they're using the word Barak. So all the assembly blessed the Lord God of their fathers and bowed their heads and prostrated themselves before the Lord and the king. So prostrated, so just kind of kneeling down, kind of moving forward, right? So just an act of kneeling, the act of just showing him praise and adoration. So that's one way we can show him praise. But again, the essential, the essential um, premise that I'm 
that I'm reviewing today is the three powers of praise. So praise is so powerful that the enemy can flee, but not only can the enemy flee, but in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 22, I, I said that because of the, the singing and praise of the people at that time, that they defeated whoever they wanted to defeat it, their enemy at that time in the war. Okay, number two point. Praise leaves no room for complaining and negativity. Okay, second point. Praise leaves no room for complaining and negativity. Sometimes even with our prayers, we just tend to just be negative because we don't really have a belief that it's really going to happen. But essentially, God knows our heart. God knows our struggles. And a lot of times we tend to pray kind of surrounding our struggles, right? Instead of giving a praise for where we currently are or for the future of what we believe he's going to do, we just begin to just manifest and just think about our struggles throughout the entire time, right? So, but we have to remember what he's already done in our lives. And we, we we're reminded that he's concerned about whatever we're going through and he's capable of taking all the burdens away from us. He's able to just hear our burdens and he already knows our burdens, but he wants us to communicate those burdens. In Psalm chapter 103, verses two to four, I'm going to read it. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget all Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? So going into our praise and singing and praise and me just playing a song before we uh, begin every evening, it just gives us into a mode of singing and praise and kind of saying to ourselves, man, you know what? Things aren't so bad as what we possibly thought. And that's why, again, I just love being a chaplain. I love counseling. I love hearing people's stories. Why? Because um, it reminds me the reason why I should praise each and every day, that there's individuals who are dying right now who could possibly be listening to this message that we're going through right now. So consistently, you should be demonstrating your praise because you have one life to live. There are no second lives. Despite what maybe some people believe, well, there are no second lives on earth, right? So the, the second life that we're going to live is essentially in heaven, right, or in hell. So praise leaves no room for complaining or negativity. So when you're constantly thinking about just how good he is, just how great it is, Essentially, your, your mind begins to be engulfed with it and your body starts to react. So think about when you feel like you're hungry, you, you start thinking about the hunger, you start turning on the TV or other form of communication, and you're seeing all these individuals eating or you're seeing great food. What essentially happens? You too become hungry, right? So if you're constantly surrounding yourself with singing and praise in different facets, then hopefully you're just embodied with all his love within you. You have a certain type of motivation that is pushing away any type of negativity that you're experiencing at the time. So praise is going to leave no room for any type of negativity. I'm going to read another one in um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15, and it reads, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Let me read that again. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. So it's indicating here that they understand that praise is a sacrifice So because they're indicating that sacrifice of praise. So praise is a sacrifice to God continually. So what's continually? Constantly, day and night, consistently. And it reads, that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. So the fruit of our lips, all your words, just giving thanks to his name. Having fruitful types of thoughts. And what type of praise is it referring to right now? It's yada. Yada. Y-A-D-A-H. So Y-A-D-A-H. And that means hands to God. Hands to God. So yada is a Hebrew word, and it comes from two root words. Yad means like an open hand, 
direction or power. So ya means an open hand, direction, or power. In ah, the A-H at the end, it has a reference to Jehovah. Okay? So together, they're just forming hands to God. Hands to God. So it's kind of like um, surrendering, just as a child would do his parent. It's a pick-me-up. Or um, kind of like saying with your hands, I'm all yours, right? And that's also referenced in Genesis chapter 29, verse 35. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. So I'm going to say it again. Genesis chapter 29, verse 35. That's the type of praise that's going on in, with Yada. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. And I'm going to give you one more. Uh, Psalm chapter 42, verses 9 through 11. Okay. So Yada also has a thought process of when we talk about the hands to throw out hands to worship in extended hands, right? So when individuals are extending their hands up to the sky, up to God, or maybe to the altar, they're practicing a form of yada. So not kneeling, as we said with Barak, but yada, extending of the hands. Okay. So when you praise, it's going to leave no no room for this negativity. So the first point again is praise makes the enemy flee. The second point is praise leaves no room for complaining and negativity. And my third point here is praise allows God's power to be displayed. Again, praise allows God's power to be displayed. So people's lives are affected and changed. God shakes things up through praise. He's allowed to do that, right? And when we talk about Saul and Paul and Silas, um, essentially they were in prison, they were shackled, they were chained um, in a prison and other prisoners were there. And throughout the, the, most of the time, what they were doing was just praising God throughout the entire time. And what happened essentially, an earthquake shook the cell and broke the chains. The jailer and his family came to know Christ that very night. So because of your praise, because of what God is doing through you, because of the, the blessings that God has given you, other people are able to be saved as well, and they too will believe. So possibly you're going through what you're going through and shouldn't keep it a secret. Because God is going to get the praise at the end and you'll be able to demonstrate just how real God is to other individuals. It's in Acts chapter 16 verses 25 to 26. Again, Acts chapter 16 verses 25 to 26. And it reads, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. So what type of praise did they have? They were just praying and singing hymns to God. And that's what we should understand about praise, right? Praise doesn't just mean singing and songs and just lifting up the hands. It could also mean a form of prayer as well, a form of adoration, as we indicated before. So about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bonds were unfastened, right? So again, so what occurred right now is that Paul and Silas, their faith was so great, although they were in prison. So, yeah, I mean, it's not essentially talking about their faith here, but they had to have some type of faith, right? To to say that they're going to sing and sing and pray and, and um, um, I'm sorry, pray and sing hymns to God. I mean, why would they pray and sing hymns to God if they didn't really believe in God or didn't believe in God's power? So, of course, they were doing that, right? And they were probably doing it with as much energy as they could possibly could. And the prisoners were just listening to them, right? And suddenly, I mean, just randomly, there's a great earthquake, right? And after that great earthquake, uh, the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were just opened, right? And everyone's bonds were just unfastened. So, so just your praise in general, as I'm indicating in this third point, allows God's power to be displayed. So the more that you possibly praise, 
the more that God can work through you, the more miracles can essentially happen because of the praise that you're demonstrating at that time. So what type of praise do I think that they were referring to? Um, I call this praise hala, H-A-L-A-H. Again, hala, H-A-L-A-H. And it's often referred to as a, as a praise that's um, unrestricted, it's undignified, it's kind of loose. Um, it's often uh, referenced as hallelujah. So when we talk about halla, um, and it means uh, just to celebrate, to rave, to boast, uh, to be clamorously foolish, right? So the type of praise that I'm referring to right now is just giving your all and having having relentless type of praise. Actually, I'm going to give you a story that I was talking to one of my good friends, and he also has a friend that went to church with him sometimes. And um, one of his friends stopped. He's he seen that he stopped going to church, and my friend seen that friend, and the, the, he was like, "Hey, how can you stop coming to the church? We miss you and stuff like that." And the guy said, the pastor told me to stop coming. He said, why did the pastor tell you to stop coming? And the, the guy said, yo, the, the pastor said that I was I was praising too hard doing praise and worship. Wow. So I guess the pastor didn't really believe in hala, which is the unrestricted type of praise. So I guess sometimes you got to watch your praise because some people may be really offended by the type of praise that you have, right? So this individual I hear, he wasn't like obnoxious. He wasn't like praising or yelling while the pastor's preaching or teaching or any type of announcements. It was just during the worship section, right? But your praise may be so great because of what you've been through, because of what you believe God is going to do in the future that some people won't be able to handle it, right? But keep on praising because as demonstrated with Paul and Silas, your praise can often break the chains that are attempting to bind you. So that's the uh, that's the word that I have today. So my first point of emphasis is praise is going to make the enemy flee. Praise makes the enemy flee. My second point is praise leaves no room for complaining and negativity. My second point again is praise leaves no room for complaining and negativity. And my third point is allows praise allows God's power to be displayed. God's power to be displayed. Okay. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to just give us a short little prayer um, so we can better focus on him in the future, right? So, Father God, I thank you for everything that you are doing for us and will continue to do for us in the future, Lord. Lord, we understand that our praise is so powerful that it can break chains, as demonstrated in several of these verses that I read, Lord. It can break any type of chain that is tempting to bind us, Lord, that we know with you we can be set free. Lord, we don't want to go through these cycles anymore, these cycles of constantly doing the same thing, these cycles of um, not showing you the reverence and adoration that you deserve despite how much you love us, despite all the things that you're currently giving to us, despite us being able to pay for a cell phone bill, us being able to have a roof over our head, us being able to have resources in order to drive or take any other mode of transportation, Lord. Lord, we don't want to go through those cycles anymore. We want to show you praise in absolutely everything that you do for us, Lord. Lord, we're asking you that you constantly just um, remind us just how grateful we should be, that maybe you should, that we don't want to be reminded in the worst ways. We want to be reminded in the best ways, Lord, little instances of what our faith can actually do, Lord, because we understand that as long as we have the faith, we have faith as a mustard seed. We have the faith as a mustard seed, and we have other modes of just demonstrating our love to you, that anything is absolutely possible, Lord. Lord, we're, we're praising you in advance. We understand that the power of praise is so great. 
that we should consistently praise. We should praise in our sleep, Lord. We should praise while we're driving, Lord. We should praise in absolutely any type of atmosphere that it deems even possible, Lord. We should praise before we start working, Lord. Lord, constantly remind us of the power of praise as we walk tonight, as we walk tomorrow, as we walk every day, to just continually just seek your face, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 you have the power you have the power to stop the negativity